Hey, Angela, how you doing today? Welcome to the live. Thank you for coming in. I enjoyed that video. Well, I can't say enjoy because he was killing people. That video um, you put up this morning. Did you ever get your comments to work? Hi, Burns. How you doing? I didn't even see you. Welcome to the live. I talked about that the other, oh about the book. <laughs> yes, I'm asking for everybody's personal belief. Uh, I can't believe my daughter just mentioned bonnets. <laughs> she she is at the store and said everyone there has their head. Oh my God. Now head wrap, I love head wraps. Head wraps, I can deal, I love them. That's what we wear. But these bonnets, it's my personal opinion. Just my personal opinion. If you want to wear your bonnets out, you can wear them. But my own personal opinion, you will not catch me out in a bonnet. But you will in a head wrap or a hat. But I'm from the old school. Just don't do that. Uh, hey, Rochelle. Hello, Beverly and Angela. No. Lisa is trying to help me. Okay, okay. Burns, bonnets depend on if you got your hair done. I don't, it don't even depend on me, Burns, if you got your hair done. If you got your hair done, fine. But you don't have to wear that big old flop down bonnet. I guess, um, pajama, yep, I, I don't like pajama, pajamas and slippers. I come from the old school. When I was young, people would go out with those pink rollers in their head. You know how we used to roll our hair up in them pink rollers? Lord, them old people would get to talking about them for the, having them pink rollers in their head. And then when they start doing them little finger waves and they would have all the, the little hair clips, hair pins all over their heads, they didn't like that. But in my era, you did not see uh, your neighbor or friend. Um, you didn't see the ladies in their night clothes. You see them in a house coat over their gown or pajamas. But you never actually saw what they had under that house coat. Now people are doing lives with the bonnet on their head and their gown with their breasts hanging out and, and they're hollering, uh, I'm going to be real. This is just how I am. I'm just real. Well, this is your business. This is a business, if you want to believe it or not. A lot of people say, I'm just on here to have fun. I'm just having a good time. And I'm just like, that's fine, too. But you need to consider it as a business. What corporation going to want to endorse you and you're sitting on your life with this big pink bonnet on your head? Don't even look like you've washed your face because you still see the uh, the eye boogers in your eyes. I've been to lives where you, you see people like that. You actually see the eye boogers in their eyes and crust around their mouth. And they're wondering why they can't grow on YouTube. First impressions. That's what we taught from Little on up. Remember when we go to school and our mamas used to check us, make sure you didn't have no holes in your panties, that your panties were clean, your little bra was clean. If you had on a slip, that your slip was clean. All your underclothes were clean because you don't know what may happen to you while you're out and you represent that house and you got to be in order. Now they don't care. They just don't care. Let me see what the comments. Hey, living your best life. How you doing, sweetheart? Web savvy. How you doing? Welcome to the live. Um, 
who else? Everybody's speaking to have Now you know I don't endorse bonnets, but I did a nighttime routine where I put on my bonnet or either doing my makeup. But doing your makeup, yeah, I understand that doing your makeup. Um, but I understand put your bonnet on, so I understand that. But what I'm talking about, hey, Andrew, welcome to the live. How you doing today? Thank you for coming in. And I also have membership on my channel. And for those who want to join, please come on along. I'm going to have some good goodies for you. I am going to have recipes that you can only find if you are a member. And they are pure gold. So it's up to you if you want to become a member. Um, Angela said, I have book. <laughs> they are, Angela. And when I see those... I, hey, Fancy, how you doing today? I just click off. We have eight people in the live and four thumbs up. Please share me out. Y'all share me out. Uh, Angela says, yes, first impressions. Better not have a safety pin on my slip. I'm <laughs> Angela, girl, you spoke truth. I, You better not have a safety pin on it. I'll remember those days. Lord have mercy, you bet not had a safety pin on this on that slip. And see, I'm 69. So I was from that era of the colored and the and the white drinking fountain, all that stuff. Me and Angela, we in that group. We we were in that group. So I in the little town I lived in Weldon. Um, it was cotton and peanuts and stuff like that, but mostly cotton. And the little truck would come around with the little uh, white man who owns the farms and pick up the people in the morning to go pick his cotton. So if you ever look at pictures of people going to pick them the cotton, they have the scars on, the head wraps, and I guess bonnets, but they didn't call them bonnets back then. They had on the dress. And they had the pants under their dress or their skirt, which is a style now. Back then, that to me, when you see somebody dressed like that, it was just saying they're going to the, the uh, cotton patch to pick cotton. But now it's a style. They wore the old toy blue jeans that now you're paying $200 for. Back then, when I was little, if you had blue jeans with holes in it, you was po. You was po po. Now... It's, it's dressing. You you have arrived if you have those. But that's how things have changed. But like we were just saying, your first impression. And I have went on some lives that I will never go back on because of that first impression of seeing that person in the head bonnet and how they looked and how they presented themselves. Um, looking like little house. Thank you. Look, where I know we all have our own personal feelings about that. They giving uh, Monique hell about it. And she's just doing it in love. She's just, you know, when I was little, the older ladies, they would tell you just like it is. They wouldn't sugarcoat it. They would let you know how it is and what they expected of you. And you better not talk back and how they are talking back to her. Lord, our lips would be on the wall. Our lips would be on the wall if we said stuff like that to grown people. And if you call grown people by their first name, you better say Miss Walker, Miss Smith, Miss Thomas. You better not be hollering Merlin, Doris, Beverly. Oh, no. I didn't know for years that grown people had first names. <laughs> I always thought it was Mrs. or Miss or Mr. That's how we did it. Uh, I must say that the first time I visited a real Southern town and it blew my mind to see the women in Piggly Wiggly with half coat curlers and slippers. I loved it. <laughs> and honey, when you go to the Piggly Wiggly, you're going to see that. You got that right. Uh, hello, and Aiden. Aiden, how are you doing? My glasses are fogging up. I can hardly see. Uh, I used to cry about segregated train stations and bus stations when I was little. 
it was it was it it was awful. It was awful, Angela. Yep, I did a lot of crying. Web savvy, there is a lady in my town I have never called an an, an elder uh, by their first name called out. <laughs> you didn't do that. You just didn't do that. I guess that's where my husband got that from. He does not like it when I wear a headscarf. He says, you must be on your way to the fair. <laughs> Girl, on your way to the fields. Because that was the gear that we wore to the fields. You wrap that head up. You put all you could up there. Because sometimes we hid food to eat in that scarf. You would have uh, like fruits and stuff. And we ate cucumbers like they were apples. And you just put all kinds of little stuff in that. You could put it in now. A multitude of sin would be hid in that head scarf. But that's what we had to wear then. You couldn't. I have never seen nobody when I was younger out in the streets wearing the clothes that they wore to the fields because nobody wanted the next person to know that they had to work in those fields. That was something that we just didn't go around bragging about. And you sure didn't brag about how you looked then, sitting on the back of that truck going to the fields. Burns, the things about Monique is that she was on live I know who that robe, that gray robe on. That gray robe. And I am not going up to anyone to say, uh, take off your bonnet and represent black folk. No, I'm not going to do that either because that's their own choice. They, they chose to go out looking like that. I'll just look at you. But I ain't going up and tapping you on the show, shoulder and say, baby, I love you. But don't do that. I ain't doing all that. That's that person's choice. They do what they want to do. But it's sad to me and breaks my heart. You are teaching our young ladies to act like that and to, um, you know, to not care about how they present themselves when they go out. And this can, when, when I was younger, I never heard a black child talk back to their parents or holler at their parents. When I hear that now, I still shake because I can't believe I heard what I said, what I heard. Because, you know, then they beat us like we like we were slaves. They beat us. They did not play because when you know you're going to get a whipping from your parents, your mother or your father, it was going to be a real whipping. And the lessons those that I learned from that, well, don't do that again because you know the consequences of doing that. You're going to get a whooping. And and when I was little, my father's hands and my sight was like that big. Like they were just humongous, but they weren't. But to a child, that's how I saw them because um, I didn't want him hitting me. I just didn't want him hitting me. And my used to always tell me, if you don't straighten up, when Carr get home, that's what she called him, Carr. His name was Alan Carr. When Carr get home, I'm going to tell Carr on you. That's all you got to say. I'm through with whatever I was doing. That's all you got to say. Um, I'm good. I got my dog back, and now I'm living in a house that is better. I'm glad you got your dog back. That is good, good, good. It was called pride. Yes, it was, Angela. It was pride. And you and you had pride in how you how you looked. And, and like I said, you represented that household. We may have been poor. We always had plenty of food. We always had lights. But other things, no, we didn't have like everybody else. Because we was poor. Because my father made 15. I have um I'm going to have to show it on one of the lives. I got to put up with his stuff. But I saved all his old receipts from where he, he worked when he worked at uh, Turner Lumber Company. And he made $15 a week. $15 a week. And he took care of everything. He got paid every Friday. And he worked second shift. And when he would come home, my treat 
what I've told you this before, was a sugar daddy. I look forward to that. Because when daddy get paid, I would always get a sugar daddy. Web savvy. You better not disrespect them. You might. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wasn't nothing said about it. Wasn't nothing said about it, Web savvy. One day I said, darn. And, you know, I could tell by my father's countenance, how he looked. That that was something I shouldn't I should not have said, but I couldn't figure out what did I say? What did I say? I just said darn. And he finally said, spoke and said, Don't ever say that word again. He said, It's too close to a cuss word. I didn't even know what the cuss word was, let alone because in my household, you never heard cuss words. I never heard daddy cuss. I never heard my mama cuss. We, I just never heard cuss words until I got outside of my house and exposed to other people. And then I heard cuss words. But I never, I never heard neither one of them say a cuss word. Uh, Burns says, wow, God bless him. Angela says, I was an old-fashioned mother and raised my children the exact way that I was raised to show respect. Yes, to this day, my girls say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. They're respectful. And my husband, who is 72, he steals to everybody. He'll say, yes, sir, no, ma'am. He's very, even people 20 years old. He will say, when he's speaking on the phone to someone, it's always, yes, ma'am. Thank you. No, ma'am. Very, I got, I, there for a while, I was wanting him to quit. And I said, why do you keep saying that to everybody? Ain't nobody saying it to you. But he's being respectful. And that's how he was taught. And that is in him. And that's what you put in your child is what you get out. And if you wonder why, and some of them, some of them will do different things yeah, and go a different path because they're different people. But if you instill them, like, you know, we always heard when you take your child to church, the whole time they're little and growing up until they get grown, they may stray away, but it's in them. Keep praying and they will be back. And they believe that 100%. And I've seen it happen a lot of times. You know, people who were church bodies and then all at once got out in the world, but they were living their life the way they thought they had to live their life. But when a situation comes, God opened up their eyes and they came back home to their church. Even though we are the church, the church is in us, but they came back to the building. Uh, love and light. Back to work. I go, okay, thank you for stopping by, Burns. Um, bye, Vern. Web savvy, right. Those children had that foundation that you, that you taught them. Yes. It's in your children act like what you teach them. Like these, all these young people now doing this shooting and killing and stuff that's going on. And I'll be thinking, where are their parents? That are for in Knoxville, we've had a, a lot of young people killing other young people. And I'm thinking, where are their parents? How are they out doing what how they get these pistols? It's just unimaginable to me. It's just unimaginable. Because to me, as a parent, you're supposed to know what's going in and out of your house. No, we don't know everything going in and out of our, our house. But the majority of the things. And most of the time, you clean in that room. You clean in that room. So if I walk in that room, I make the mortgage here. I pay the bills here. So I know it's your room. But if I'm cleaning it, I'm going to look. Web savvy, right. Those children had the foundation that you, yeah, I read that. Yes. You got to put into them. You, you got to pour into them. You got to pour, you got to speak life into your child. You got to speak over your child that they will grow to be the man and the woman that you will want them to be. Because we all want far better for our children than uh, what we had. Shonda, hello, everyone. I finally caught a live. Well, hello, Shonda. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. We're we're talking about a little bit of everything, but mostly it's about this bonnet situation and people 
going everywhere and oh lord they get every different color and um i've heard um people on their lives say you know i'm gonna wear my bonnets i'm gonna wear my bonnet and be doing all this i'm gonna wear my bonnet i don't care what you say or what you think but did uh did you look at the playback did you look at yourself and see how you looked did you actually take the time to see what you look like and then when someone throw up the word, you know, ghetto or ghetto looking, you get all sensitive. You get all emotional and upset. I'm not ghetto. I'm not. But yeah, the devil is a liar. Angela, when I see a young girl out half dressed, I wonder how anyone loved her and let her leave the Angela, I thought the same thing. You can have a beautiful body, but you don't have to show everything. You got to give, you know, something to think about, but they don't give nothing to think about. They just show it all. The tighter with the big stomachs, stomachs. Sometimes I can't tell if they're pregnant or not pregnant. The stomach's so big and, and you know not to ask, you know, when your baby do, because half the time they ain't pregnant. They just, we were taught to wear girdles. <laughs> To wear girdles to make sure we pull that in. But they're just, they're not taught these things nowadays. One of mine had the nerve to tell me about this uh, privacy in this room. I said, You don't have no privacy in my house. Do you? Thank you. I thank you. Uh, when the light bill comes, uh, who pays that? Who pays the insurance on this house? Who pays the house note? Who buys the groceries? I don't think you buy any of that. Let me turn my phone down. I ain't got time for that. Children being taught by children. They're Thank you. That's it, Angela. That's it. And they think guns is, 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 I guess guns is their father. You don't even see fathers out in the yard playing uh, football with their sons or softball. You don't you don't see that. Like when when our girls were little, you know, you go to the lake on the weekends and and you take the boat out and and you ride and you have a little picnic at the lake and stuff like that. And they swim and you have a good time. No, mm -mm. no, that you don't see that no more. They so busy trying to get into the next thing and see what they can do and say. But Lord, we got to keep praying. We just got to keep praying and cover these children. We got to cover them in prayer. We got to keep them going. Shonda says, my grandmother always told me, you are a representative, the representative of Christ. Yes, Lord. And when you walk out of this house, you must dress accordingly. Lord, that gave me cold cheers because you sound like some of the old sisters I grew up with. And they meant it. You walk out accordingly. You dress up. And how they... It's no way in the world I will get up here on here doing a live looking like I just got up out of the bed. You won't see me doing a live in my nightgown. It ain't happening. I ain't getting in that kitchen cooking and you see me in, me in my nightgown. First of all, have you washed your face? Have you washed your butt from the night before? You in there cooking breakfast. Okay. Looking like you're stinking. And you going to tell me something? Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Uh, how are you speaking there? Okay, good afternoon. Mackenzie, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm good. I'm making dinner. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> I need to be, but I ain't going to cook today. No. Shonda says, we know people by, by their fruits. And like we said before, 
first impressions. And you can't get back. I mean, you can't get that thought about what you first saw of that person, how they present their sale. And like I told you, your YouTube, this is your business. This is a corporation. You are the president and CEO of your corporation. You're looking for brand deals and people to sponsor you and to come look after you. And when they go and look at some of your videos and see how you present yourself, what kind of brand deal you, who is, who going to want to sponsor you? Who going to want to put you out as the, as the front person for their product? And they don't know if you're going to show up in that green bonnet or not. Or if you, let alone the green bonnet, if you're going to have a bra on. Ain't nobody wanting to sponsor you. And that's why a lot of people are quitting off of YouTube. Not as part of the reason for some of them. Because they can't find, figure out, well, I can't get nobody to be interested in my channel. You got to be interested in your channel yourself. You got to show something. I'm going, Beverly, to get ready. Everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, I'll see you in a little while, Rochelle. Rochelle, ha Rochelle, before you go, put the name of your program in. She has a, um, a program where she interviews you. And today at 2 o'clock, she'll be interviewing me. So I'll, I won't be on here as long because I'm going to have to get off so I can I can go and, and uh, be with Rochelle for the interview. But uh, she has a good little program going, and I am proud of her. Oh, Mackenzie, I'm making, I haven't had Sloppy Joes in years. That sounds so good. It really does. Shonda, she writes, did I say hello to you, Shonda? I can't even remember. And I'm a senior. And what I did uh, five seconds ago, sometime I can't even tell. My mind just goes, but that's all right. I'm, I'm thankful for everyone who is here with me. I appreciate it. But when I seen that Monique did that, when I first saw it, I said, oh, this is going to blow up. <laughs> this is going to blow up. And they have the nerve to come on there and that love bonnet's talking their trash too. My daughter just called. Two women were in bathrobe slippers. See, and I love, I mean, really love, seriously love to go to grocery stores, Walmart, places like that and sit in the parking lot and watch people go in and out the stores. Is anybody like that here besides me? Am I the only one that like to sit and watch people? When we go, sometimes Jimmy will say, are you going in with me? And I say, uh-uh. I got to sit here and watch. I can do it to my watch. Uh, oh, Rochelle said, the show, you throughout the years, if you want to be on the show and talk about your childhood until adulthood, email Rochelle at Bayesian Stroke Survivor at Gmail. So there it is. If you want to be on her show, email her and she'll tell you all about it. And she does a nice little show. I pull them on the side and love and explain the difference between proper attire and what what um, should be worn on TV. There is a way to speak to them so that they won't feel embarrassed and never come back to church or worse, not to not to seek God any longer because of the way they were treated. Hey, D. Parker, how are you doing? Miss Black and everybody have a blessed Thursday. You have a blessed Thursday also, sweetheart. Yes, there is a way because um, I'm a mother in the church. My husband is a deacon and, and I am the chairman of the deaconess board. And um, I've had situations where you have to speak to people, but you do it in love. And, and like Web Savvy says, it's the way that you do it. It is the way that you do it. But a lot of people can, and I don't, I didn't realize I showed it as much. They can tell by my eyes or how I look at them, how I feel, you know, what is going on. And I've had a lot of, uh, what's wrong? What did I do? 
And I said, what do you mean? I can tell by how you're looking at me. And I don't realize that I'm showing it. You know, I'm showing what I'm thinking, I guess. But uh, then I have to get my words together because uh, you have to be careful of your words because you can destroy somebody with your words. You can um, have a person not want to come back to church again with your words. You got to do it with love. And most of all, in your mind, you got to pray before you speak. Lord, give me the right way words to say that I can bless this person and not curse them. I don't want to do that. I never want to do that. That's why I'm not going up and tapping people and tell them. But uh, in church, you have people coming in there sometimes in the choir, wearing the wrong attire. Um, those in the choir, I can approach better. But someone just coming to church and who haven't been in the church and they really don't know what they need to be wearing. And they look like they're wearing the outfit that they wore to the club last night. I, I don't go to that person then. I give them a chance, I, especially if they're going to come back, you know, a few times and they get more comfortable. They look around and they see how everybody else is dressed. And our church, we're, we're not dressing like, you know, you wear what's comfortable for you. Now, we have been to the point where we were the hat wearing, suit wearing, one of those group of people. But we're not like that anyway, anymore. You just wear what is comfortable for you. That's how I feel. Um, I'll be like that. My roommate will say, you coming in or what I would tell him, no, I'm good. I would rather stay and watch. He will say, <laughs> okay, and see what you, when I come out. I will say, all right. Then, ha, ha. Yeah, I love to watch people. I love to watch them. D.D., I'm good. And you, thank you. I'm good too, D.D. Andrew, sometimes I would say, did you see that guy in the parking lot would say who? <laughs> I know it's, it's unbelievable. And a couple of weeks ago, I was at Walmart. And see, I don't know. You got to be careful now when you approach people, when you think they need help. This guy was lying down. He had just gotten out of the car, out of the truck, and he fell down. And he was lying there, you know, on the pavement. And the guy driving the car, truck was just sitting there. And I'm going, what is going on? He's not getting out to help him. Should I go help him? What is going on? And so you got to be careful of those situations because you don't know if they're going to throw you in the truck or what they're going to do. So eventually... He got up and, and he went on, you know, and the guy in the truck went on like he didn't get upset. And I said, what is going on here? And especially in this one of them kind of trucks that, you know, were questionable about the truck, were questionable about certain vans we see, you know, the kids even call them kidnap vans. Now, that's bad when the kids know. Uh, these little white or these uh, white vans and these little run down looking vans, they call them the kidnap vans. See, that's bad when the kids see it. Like I said before, if Christ is, is in you, it will show. If you have no light, that shows too. Our commission is to be in people of Christ, not drive them away. The tongue is the most divisive Remember, the tongue will kill you. You hear me? It will kill you. That's why you got to watch what you you say. You you know, you got to pray before you speak. You know, Lord, to bless my tongue, to give me the right words to say the right things, um, to build people up, not tear them down, to build them up. Uh, Web Savvy said, I saw a video where the choir was rocking and a man broke and danced like he was at the club. <laughs> I seen one similar to that. And then I seen one where I guess it was a lady that was supposed to be in the spirit, but she was dancing like she was in the club. And my husband brought that to my attention. And I was a little confused, like, okay, is she, you know, Different people act different ways when they're in the spirit because um, my mother-in-law, when she was alive, when, when she was caught up in the spirit, she would just laugh. 
she would just like, <laughs> I would love to hear her do it. Love to hear her do it because you could feel the anointing. You knew she was real and it was the way she did it. Then it was another mother in that church. When she was in the spirit, she would spin around. She would get up and just spin around. And I mean, this woman was like in her 80s and you knew she was in the spirit. The Lord took care of her. She never failed. She just spent. That woman just spin around in the circle and then she would sit down. And then we had this man and well, he was a minister. He would walk the end of the pews. I actually saw that. And he was an older man and he never missed a beat. Uh, let's see, Web Savvy, couldn't agree with you more. Psych, sure. You. Thank you, Psych. Thank you. Oh, uh, Sky. Thank you, Sky. Tomorrow, Psych. Thank you, Sky, for sharing me out. Uh, Shonda said, Amen. Yeah, when people are caught up in the spirit, they act, uh, they respond differently. You know, in David time, David, they dance. They danced. I mean, they would dance till all their clothes came off. We seen that now. We think somebody's crazy. But they danced. And the dance was a holy dance. But in the in the word it says dance. Just says dance. Sky, I'm all right. I'm listening to um my re my record. I'm proud of my masterpiece. Yes, yes, yes. The masterpiece. Uh, but yeah. You got to think before we say things. We we need to bring blessings and not cursings to others. We want to bless people. We want to lift them up. And we don't want to pull them down. Especially someone new coming to church and you're going to hit them and, and tell them, uh, yeah, my album is out. Oh, what album is that? Um. You don't want to feel like, you know, I went to church and, and all they did was pull me down. No, you want them to feel like they're in a family environment. Me in this shirt, I just feel like, ooh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you, want, you want people to feel like they are at home. They're surrounded by family. They're surrounded by love. That's what they need to be surrounded by. It is called Evil Versus Good. And it's a pop rap album. Okay. Evil versus good. Evil can't win now. He's been defeated. Um, okay. I'm caught up. Those are some pink, pretty pink hearts, Angela. I like those. Once again, I'm going to throw in about... Um, to join my channel membership, I would appreciate it. Anyone who wants to join to become a member of the family here, it would be a blessing. It would truly be a blessing. I'm going to stay on about 10 more minutes and then get off because I got to get ready for Rochelle's interview. So what it, I don't know when it will come out. Maybe next week. Probably next week. I didn't even think to ask her the date that it was coming out so everybody can watch it where she does the interview with me. I'm looking forward to it. But she does it from your childhood on up. I don't remember a lot of my childhood. So this is going to be interesting. We'll see. Shonda says, like the word says, iron sharpens iron. We are to be the sharper the sharpers, sharpeners of the dull edges. Lift our brethren up. We don't do that enough. We don't. We don't do that enough. We got to lift each other up. We got, like I said, we got to speak life into people and not death. We got to speak life. And Lord, forgive me if I've spoken wrong today, and I pray that my words were seasoned with salt and will be a blessing and people can receive it in love and understanding. And my feeling, my beliefs and feeling are my own personal beliefs and feeling. Like you have the right to feel and believe as you choose, as I do also. So I want that to come across. No, I don't like the bonnet thing out. 
That's my personal feeling. That's how I personally, that's how I was brought up. That's what's in me. But um, how you feel, the younger generations, mm -hmm. that's what they have been around. That's what they seen, like the sagging pants. That's what they see as the norm. I don't see it as the norm. My norm was covering up and to be presentable. Have your hair in, in order, your face in order. My mother-in-law was, what, 92 or 93 when she passed two years ago? And she would get up every morning. Every When she got up every morning, she took her bath. She put powder on her face, her red lipstick on. Her nails were always polished. I don't do that. She always kept her nail polished. And she would go in the living room and do her puzzles and uh, work her puzzles. And, and then she likes to do those crosswords. You know, she did those books. But you would think she was going somewhere. She wasn't going nowhere. But she always sat presentable. She would say, you don't know who may stop by. And then as she got sicker, you know, and, and was in the bed, she wanted to make sure she had, she would let us know that she wanted pretty pajamas. She wanted pretty pajamas to be presentable when someone came to see her. Amen. Because the enemy seeks to steal and destroy. He sure does. But he's under my feet. He is under my feet. Um, amen. For what is salt that has lost his flesh. Oh, Jesus. Speak it. Yes, that's it. Andrew, my roommate name is Jeremy Hutchins. He is a mess. Got me laughing every day. Well, at least he makes you laugh. He makes you smile. Shonda, I am thankful that my son, who is, is a grown man now, dresses like a young gentleman should dress. Shirts tucked in, pants pulled in, belts on clean, a little mini GQ. That's, that's it. I like that. I like that. You are teaching him well. And no, they ain't going to do everything perfect. No, because we didn't. I mean, you got to live. You're going to have trials and tribulations. But the seed has been planted. Mommy planted that seed. Daddy planted that seed. Uh, well, Savvy, I'm off to work today. I'm off from work today. I'm glad I caught your live stream. I look for your interview with Rochelle. Okay, I'm so glad you caught it too. Thank you, sweetheart. Uh, Andrew, I have a song called Salt. Andrew, you have a lot of songs, don't you? You have a lot of songs, Andrew. That's good. Shonda, my son dresses well. I am proud of him too. I have two daughters. And, and and they dress present. They are beautiful when they step out, and that's what you want them to. I mean, you don't want people looking at you secondly because you look stupid. You want them to look at you because you look good. You look nice. You look like somebody that they might want in their family, or somebody they might want their daughter or son to know. You don't look like. Mm -mm. Nah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nah. Another one. Look people in the eye. Thank you. Thank you. It was a young man that came around us not too long ago. And he could, and I was excited about meeting this person. But the whole time he couldn't look me in the eye. And I'm going, oh, why? Why? And have you ever met someone? That the first time you met them, you felt real uncomfortable being around. And it was something in your spirit. You just didn't feel right being around this person. I get that a lot. And I try to shake it. I try to shake it because sometimes it is some so-called good people. But I can't get past it. I just can't get past it. Uh, Shonda, Angela, that's right. My grandma said cleanliness starts at home and spreads abroad, and it starts with you. Amen to that. And it's not in the Bible. 
but I believe it wholeheartedly. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And that is not in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible, but it's what we say. Angela, a lady came up to me in the store and asked me a question the other day and said it was because I was the only one dressed nice. Amen. And I was, um, well, my husband and I have talked about this. All, I said, I don't, I can wear a sock over my head sometime. And every time we go out, I don't care where I go, somebody, I thank you, Lord, is going to compliment me about something I have on, my hair, or uh, something about my person. It, it never fails. It never, and I thank God for it. I give him the glory, the honor, and the praise because he puts in my, it in my heart to be presentable. But every day, I mean, I don't care what I wear. Someone's going to tell me that they like it when we go out. Shonda said, yes, I don't like shifty eyes. So I don't either, Shonda. It is something about them. And it's this one person that really, it's been bothering me heavily. And she's a beautiful, sweet lady. Everybody loves her. But every time I go around her, my spirit gets in an uproar for some reason. I don't know what it is. I cannot explain it. The woman has never done nothing to me. I never seen her do nothing. Nothing out of out, out ordinary, uh, well spoken of, but it's something within my spirit will not let me get close to that woman. And I and I want to because everybody else is, but it won't let me. I don't know why. Uh, Shonda says, that's the Holy Spirit warning you something isn't wrong. I know it. I, I know it is. And I said, well, what is it? Because everybody else loves her. And I don't understand what it is. Now, I know one of my gifts is discernment. And the Lord has not opened up to me yet what it is that I need to know. He's just giving me that feeling. And I don't know why, because this woman's never done nothing to me. Never. But it's there. Thank you, um, Living Your Best Life. Everyone, please like. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's 11 people in the lot. Well, now 10. And I have eight thumbs up. Andrew, I have had a lot of songs. Actually, the name of my album is called Fear of Intimacy, but I didn't sell a lot of the copies. Okay. Shonda, no, it isn't in the Bible, but God gave a model as to how we should conduct ourselves. Amen. That's right, Shonda. Angela, I get compliments too, usually about my shoes or my boots. Yes. Mine is mostly about my clothes. And I used to, I had over a hundred hats and I just gave them away. When I decided I didn't want to wear hats anymore, I just gave them away. And I always got compliments about my hats. And when I wore hats, I always wore suits to match. I had a suit to go with every hat. And when I stepped out, people would always compliment me about that. Even my casual clothes, they compliment me. But it's how I present myself. It's the Christ in me that they see mostly. And I thank God for that. And, I, and I've had people several times to come up and say, you're a Christian, aren't you? You love the Lord, don't you? I mean, I'm glad they can see that in me. That makes my day when they can see Christ in me. Uh, exactly, Shonda. God gives us free. Yes, I'm on. I'm doing a live before you say so. <laughs> My husband just walked in. Uh, Shonda, there is a reason why everybody else loves her. God's, God's people, his chosen, we are set apart. We don't follow the world, we are in it, but we are not in it. So that measures of the Holy Spirit lives and breathes. Amen to that. Uh, and Shonda said, and us, so we are around something that is not right. The Holy Spirit warns us to stand back. Amen. And that's what's going on. 
the uh, Shonda says the Lord gifted us with discernment. Amen. Amen. Well, I am going to um, go ahead and speak decree and declare over you because it is getting close to time that I have to go with Rochelle. So I want to do a quick live before I met up with Miss Rochelle. Okay, I'm going to speak, decree, and declare over your life today and my life also. I am courageous. I am unstoppable. I am victorious. I am love. I am blessed. I am gifted. I am anointed. I am successful. I am healed. I am healthy. I am beautiful. I am whole. I am confident. I am forgiven. I am grateful. I am generous. I am strong. I am favored. I am able. I am powerful. I am fruitful. I am God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece because our God does not make any junk. You are made in the image of God and walk like you are made in his, in his image. I love you, but God loves you more because you are his masterpiece. And thank you, everybody, for coming to the live today. And thank you for sharing your thoughts on the title. You all have a blessed and prosperous day, and I will see you soon.